Number five, the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question to the Minister for Social Development and Employment. Is she confident that the Ministry of Social Development has responded adequately to the Christchurch earthquake? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes. Um, I think they've responded more than adequately, and I'm intensely proud of the work that the MSD staff have done. Um, as well as those numbers that I've given in the previous question, the list is very long, but um, they have fielded more than 94,000 inbound calls. They have proactively contacted more than 23,200 elderly and vulnerable people um, in outbound calls. They've sent text mes messages to more than 18,000 students about their payments. They opened all weekend for the last two weekends to process payments and provide assistance. They've set up the recovery assistance centres. There's been eight mobile vans that have been out into those, um, into those areas. They have staffed the welfare centres. Um, they've made more than 54,000 civil defence payments. Uh, it's been quite remarkable. In light of that answer, Mr. Question, uh, Mr. Speaker, what, what has the Ministry of Social Development done uh, to older, vulnerable superannuitants um, who do not have telephones or transport in terms of contacting them? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, they've been working alongside those non-government organisations like Red Cross and the Salvation Army, which have been going out and door-knocking. They're also part of, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it, but the operation that's going door-to-door -door that's in consultation with the Council as well. Um, so they're also working alongside them too. The Honourable Annette King. Entry question. What provision has been made to ensure people who have lost their homes and are now renting properties at inflated prices are able to quickly access the accommodation supplement if their insurance company isn't meeting the costs? And has the level of supplement been lifted to take account of this spike in rent? Paula um, Mr Speaker, in answer to the last part of that question, no, the accommodation supplement has not been increased, but there's an accommodation side to the civil defence payments, and that's actually quite generous, so that's that that we've clipped in at the moment. It's spent about a million dollars from memory um, throughout New Zealand, but mainly in Christchurch, and that's the payment we're using at the moment to cover those accommodation costs on a weekly basis. The Honourable Annette King. Will government decisions on the Welfare Working Group report be applied to the people on all benefits in Christchurch? If so, when? The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, the um, Welfare Working Group's report will be some time, but I can um, let the member know is the future focus stuff that we introduced last year around work testing um, and those on the unemployment benefit having to come in 12 months and reapply, and also those on the DPB when the youngest child is been tested for six months and that went through Cabinet this week. Question number six, Matiri. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, has he considered raising a temporary levy on income to help fund the rebuilding of Christchurch? And if so, how much could it raise? The Honourable Bill Lynch. Mr Speaker, as I've said publicly, the Government is uh, keen to get as, uh, better, much better information as time goes on about uh, what costs are likely to be incurred in the rebuilding of Christchurch. Many of those costs will be 